Grace and mercy and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you and today, January 1st, the year of our Lord, 2023. I pray that God blesses you. Today we're going to be taking and looking at the high priestly prayer of Jesus in John 17. There's a lot that it teaches us, a lot that we can learn about our Lord and about what he has for us. Begin now in prayer. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, and learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I invite you to turn, then, if you will, to your Bibles. And I invite you to turn to John 17. John 17. John 17 takes place, and it takes place in the Garden of Gethsemane. There's a picture of the, of the Garden of Gethsemane, and in particular the Mount of Olives. And you can see this is a very old olive tree. But I want you to take a look at that. Um, and where it takes place is that it is across the valley from the city. As you can see here. And this is what you can see from the Garden of Cinema. You look across and you can see the, the wall of <clears throat> the Temple Mount right there. And this is what Jesus, where Jesus would have been praying this prayer. It's on... that Thursday of Holy Week, and he is there praying. And so we're going to open it up to see what it is that he prays. One of the things you might notice as we look at this and in, is that in John 17, remember I said, when you look at Scripture, look for patterns. And I have you take uh, your nice big bucket of colors, pens, pencils as well as colored pencils to help us and highlighters to help us mark this up and i'm going to show you what it looks like after i've marked it up um, okay so here we go so when you look you can see that i've marked this up quite a bit there's a lot of things that, that i've done and that i've marked there's a lot of colors there's shapes that i've used and i've gone through this all now, I was going to do this on this program. The problem with doing it straight up on this program is, well, <laughs> there's a lot to do. We'd be here a very long time. So with that in mind, I pre-did some of these for ourselves so that we would have them. Let's take a look. The first thing I want you to know, so like I said, this is in the Garden of Gethsemane, that as we look at the Garden of Gethsemane and we see that this is a prayer, this is a prayer between the Son speaking to the Father. And I've marked the pronouns as well as the proper nouns of who Jesus is, as well as the Father. And Jesus, we marked in green. We have Jesus, he, son, son, him, Jesus Christ. And there's this conversation that goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the pink is the Father. And you, Holy Father, Father, Father again, and yours, righteous Father. All right? We can see all these different ones that they have done and, and who they are. There are a couple of them that you might see where there's a we, a we, and there is also an us in here, and I just double mark that. But you do want to see the conversation that's going with the son to the father that he's having on that particular day. This is the night before he's crucified. <clears throat> and this is the night in which he was betrayed. And, and instead of showing you <clears throat> all of these at once, I've marked some of them up. Let's take, a, let's take a look now. So not only did we have that, one of the key words that I really want you to see, and it helps us in our theology, is if you have an orange marker, and by the way, if you can print these out, please print them out. I think it's helpful. Yeah. Some people mark directly in their scriptures or study Bibles, and that's fine. But I think there's so much in 17 that it, it can get you can get a little lost. 
one of the big words that I want you to notice that shows up is the word to give or given. So we have, since you have given him authority. So who's the, who, who's giving who? We know that this is from before. This is the, the father giving authority to the son. It's not something he takes. It comes in the way of a gift. Uh, authority over all flesh. To do what? To give something that is also a gift, eternal life, to whom you have given him. Whoa, notice carefully here, and you're going to see this throughout, that there is a giving, and that giving that takes place is that the Father, the Father, our Heavenly Father, gives to the Son believers. He gives to the Son who will become Christians. He gives to the Son the people who believe in him, right? Now that goes throughout. And why is that important? Because we need to remember that the gospel works in the way of gift, not in the word of, not in the way of us earning or rewarding uh, that it comes to us, but it comes in the way of gift, something that is given to us. And even here, you'll see this language over and over again of this idea of to give or given to. Again, it is reminded name of the people whom you gave me out of the world and you gave them to me and for I have given them the words. Now here we see where the son is giving words to those who believe that you gave me. So again, he gives the words for those who have given <clears throat> whom you have given to me again, which you have given me. But Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me. And so here's that name that is given. I kept them in your name, which you have given me. So there again, I have given them your word again. Again, the glory that you have given me. So there's the giving there, the gift that there is glory that's given. So look who's running the verbs as well as look as what is being given. That I have given to them. So this glory that was given to the Son is given to them. And we'll talk more about glory in a little bit. Whom you have given me again, and then that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. So over and over again, we see this giving, giving, given, 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 past tense, present tense, future tense. You see this giving that's going on. And that's important. So often, uh, we forget that it's not about us choosing God because he says he chose us. And here we can see that he not only chose us, but he gives us to the Son as a gift. And then the Son gives us gifts in, in return. Uh, another word that you might see right here that we have, what did I do with all my papers? I had a bunch of, oh, here they are. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to reach over. A little messy here is we have the word receive what do you do with gifts what what happens with gifts and what we find out is that such as giving them the words that you gave me and they have received them have come to know the truth so they have received and and this becomes important and i'll show you in first chapter of john the gospel of john and printed some of that out in a little bit better hold that off all right so there's another words we see so we see given we see receiving and how important that is uh within this now what are some of the things that are given or, or have been received grief i did a bunch of these and i can't oh here they are <laughs> so what are some of the things that are given here are some of the things that you also see a pattern over and over again. Another one. Another pattern that you see over and over again is word. When Jesus has spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes. Over here, they have kept your word. For I have given them your word that you have given me. And have come to know the truth. And, and I mark that with word, and there's a reason because as you go down, you'll see that it says what? 
that your word is truth. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. You have given them your word. Um, so the, the scripture might be fulfilled. And sanctify them in the truth. Again, believe in through their word. So we see words showing up many times. And the word is equated with not only scripture, but it is also equated with truth. And this is what's being given. Now, one of the things that I ought to do here and, and show you is that this prayer is actually split up into three sections. <clears throat> and so if you have that, take a look. The first section that we have of this prayer is it is the first five verses. The exchange that's going on there is about the Father and the Son. See, when Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes in heaven and said, Father, the hour has come to glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. And since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to him, you have given him and this eternal life that you know you and the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent to glorify you on the earth, having accomplished the work you have given me, and now the Father glorify me in your presence with all the glory, all the glory that I have with you before the world existed. So here we see this conversation between the Father and the Son. And that first part is about the Son, and then concerning their relationship, what's been given to them, him, the, the glorifying, the authority, and I haven't even touched glory, but it, so that shows up several times here, that's given, the people that are given, the eternal life being given, all those things are showing up here. The second part is actually verses 6, all the way down, I can't see it here, but all the way down through about... Right here. And what is he praying for here? He's praying for his apostles. He's praying for his, uh, the, the disciples, the one that are following him at the time. And you notice that as he prays for them, that what he gives them what is, is, let's take a look, um, that they are protected in his name. We'll get to that in a little bit. Keep them in your name. And that they may be one. We'll get to that too. And I have kept them in a name which you have given to me. I have guarded them and not let them be lost. Except for the son of the destruction. Right there is son of destruction, by the way. That's Judas Iscariot. What he's talking about. And by the way, a reminder that Judas Iscariot is one of the Lord's. Now, he rejected that. And we can even see that when I was talking about... Um, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1. Let me, let me show you this in the first place, um, since we're talking about the Son of Destruction. And you can see it here. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came into his own, and his own people did not receive him. They didn't receive him. He comes as a gift. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, who, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So they are born of God. We are born of God. It's not something we're born of ourselves. We never give birth to ourselves. God chose us. We did not choose him, as he reminds us. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And this is Jesus, and he has seeing his glory, glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Again, we'll also talk about glory there. there. This is so full of, uh, of words that are important and have this pattern. So what other things can we see here? So, um, oh, I jumped too fast. So there he's talking about his, the, the um, disciples. Well, not only does he talk about the disciples here, but he also s talks about the world has hated them. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them, thus the evil ones, from the evil one. In other words, what we have here for the apostles, he says, look, 
we're not of the world, but we are in the world. And as we're in the world, I don't, I'm not asking you to take them out of them. Um, Christians are not to be taken out of the world. We are in the midst of the world. They, this is not talking about a uh, small little starting a Christian group all by itself, separating themselves from the world. No, we're in the world. And we know that we find out that we are a witness to Jesus Christ to the world. But he also says, as they are in the world, protect them. Protect them from the evil one. And, and again, oh, we'll get to that name. The, the third part that is split up into after verse 19, so starting at verse uh, 20, is I do not ask for only these, but for those who will believe in me through their word. Now, we know that we are told in, told in Roman 10 that faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. And that's how faith comes. People are, are, are there to preach. We cannot believe unless we hear. We cannot hear unless someone preaches. We cannot preach unless someone is sent. And we know that the Lord sends them into the world. And, and that's a word that gets shown over here over and over again also is sent. But notice who it is, those who will believe through that word their word in other words the apostles proclaim apostles write down these words not only proclaiming them in, in, in through preaching but through the written word and that word is passed down generation to generation do you realize that jesus in the garden of gethsemane was praying for you those who will believe yes he's praying for you and so that is included in this also so divided into three separate parts um, <clears throat> let's see, what shall we tackle next? Oh, there's so much here. Well, since we, we talked about the word sent, why don't I take a look and find that word sent? I, again, here we go. Take the word sent that shows up many times. So here we see, and I put a square around this one, and this is eternal life, that they know that you and the eternal God, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. He didn't come of his own, but the Father sent him. Also, I come to you, and they have believed that you sent me. So they believe this, you, that Jesus is from, from the Father. And remember, that's a, a big question. You even have Nicodemus, that he could not do these unless they came from the Father. In John chapter 3. As you sent me, now here's the key, into the world, so I have sent them, where? Into the world. So there is a sending. And by the way, the word is sent. Has that word, that's what apostle comes from, one who has been sent. Uh, apostolos. Uh, apostolos? Apa something or other. And so you can, you can see this, and so he's talking about the sending that's going on. It shows up again. I believe that you have sent me. And then a little further down, the world may know that you have sent me. And then finally, these know that you have sent me. So there's a lot of sending going on, and that's part of, it's not something you take for yourself. And they are the ones who are sent out. You don't take upon yourselves the mantle, if you will. Elijah did not take the mantle of Elijah. Or Elisha did not take the mantle of Elijah. He asked for it, but it was only when it was not for him to grant, but the Heavenly Father granted that so that he did receive that. Another long story. What, what else can we find out here? What are some of the other words that repeat themselves um, over and over again? Well, another word that seems to repeat itself over and over again is the word, oh, this is so tough, which one to go with is the word glory or to glorify. Now, when we usually think of glory or to glorify, we often think of something that is extra shiny or extra special. The idea of glory actually has this idea of, uh, the, of God in dwelling with his people, having access to him, if we will, of his access to him in graciousness, and we can especially see this, if you will, and if you go to something like Exodus 19, and, and Exodus 19 helps us because it, it helps to summarize almost what 
Exodus is about, and that's Exodus 19 around verse 10 through 13 around there. And then what follows? You'll notice that what happens there is all that was laid out is so that he was preparing the people for God to dwell with them. And that's key, and that's part of that glory, too, and having access to him, that we can be with God, that, that dwelling, if you will, of God, God dwelling with us, God coming into our midst. And he does that. Uh, another word for dwell that sometimes get translated is tabernacle. To tabernacle with them means to dwell with them. Thus, in the Old Testament, you have the tabernacle, where God literally tabernacled, dwells among them. Uh, Kings reminds us that heaven or earth cannot contain God, and yet where God places his name, there he will be, is what it tells us. And it tells them then they should face towards there and there receive forgiveness. Again, another long, long story. But keep that in mind as we have glory. Uh, some of the other things you might notice, too, is, is when you're looking at Exodus, they go and they go to Mount Sinai. It's let people go that they may worship him. And in other words, they can dwell with God. God can dwell with them. And that should tell us about worship, by the way. He, he gets to Mount Sinai, and it's at the base of the mountain, at the foot of the mountain, that the Ten Commandments are given to all the people. And also, well, also the covenant code. It's when they go to the top of the mountain. It's only Moses who goes. And it is the zenith, if you will, of of the revelation and what happens at the top of the mountain is he gives instructions for the tabernacle the dwelling of god and the worship instructions so worship and the tabernacle is about god dwelling with his people and i know i've talked a little bit about that before so when he gives this word glory and to glorify in his high priestly prayer he's really talking about access if you will to his graciousness and, and, and to, to God himself, that God and humans may be there together. And he, and he comes to us on this earth. By the way, when Jesus is 12 years old, he goes in the temple, and the, use, the word they use is that it says that Jesus was in the midst of them. That's another word that's meant just for God, that he's, he's among his people, that, that dwelling among people. So here he comes to glorify his son, and the Son may glorify you. So there's this access to one another. And I glorify you on earth. So it's on earth. Um, and because he comes to the earth, having accomplished the work, through that work that is accomplishment, and that gives access. His death and his resurrection, all these give access to the Father. And now the glorify me in your presence. Uh, there's that presence that we talked about. Glory that I have with you before the world existed. Again, I am glorified in them. And then 22, the glory that you have given me, given to you perfectly. I see my glory. Okay. I know the whole issue of glory can be a little confusing. I hope there's a little enlightenment in that. And, and otherwise, pardon my rant, my um, going on and on about it. Um, but I was hoping that that would help a little bit and seeing at least the importance as you study this and you look at it uh, some and and you notice that in the uh, John 1 again it talked about that glory being there too who well what else do we have here some of the other things that we have going on is let's go with name because his name is important his name is what he put upon us in baptism. Baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You can also look at Leviticus where it talked about um, the Aaronic benediction. In other words, the blessing of the people. And in blessing the people, it says, bless them by putting my name on them. And How is that done? By saying, uh, through these words, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, grace unto you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. So there we see God's name put upon them. Testament who his name put upon us and also in uh, in baptism and and so it is his name reveals who he is i have manifested your name to the people revealed it made it known you, you know who god is by revealing of his name and 
especially you know who God is by revealing himself in Jesus Christ. Keep them in your name. Notice the name the protection you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While they were with them, I kept them in your name. So again, you're keeping them in your name. And to them, I made known to them your name and will continue to make it known. So letting that name be known, the name above all names that was given. Wow. Uh, other things that and patterns, I told you there's just so much. And this is, I think, uh, let me see one. Okay. There's about four other words that I continue to, to show um, some of this. Let's take a look here. So the word to know, um, a little bit more than just knowledge, but we have that they may know. By the way, um, there's give us eternal life for whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they know you and the only true God and Jesus Christ. So you already have eternal life. Know they, now they know that everything that you have received and come to know the truth. Down here, the world may know, uh, but the world does not know you. I know you. These know they have sent me. I made you know and know that the love with you have love. So there's a word know. What other word do we have? We have the word world, which shows up. And I've done this in purple over and over again. World existed, world, world, world. So there's a physical world and there's a world that's against Christ. And there's being in the world. Again, we can see, see some of that. The words I, I didn't touch on um, is, is sanctified. Sanctify them in the truth. The word is truth. And so to sanctify has that idea of, of being made holy being set apart, if you will. And you can see that here. <clears throat> Another couple words. Going quite long here, I'm about ready to wrap it up, is given me, they have made, that they may be one. So that the Lord would be one, that they may, be, may all be one, they may be one even as we are one, so being made one in the Lord, and perfectly one. And that reminds us, by the way, it, it's not a relationship between just us and God. There is a oneness, a oneness with him, but also a oneness with one another. And that's what fellowship looks like, especially as you read First John, and you'll see that there too. What other word? Yes, you have sanctified. I think it shows up a couple times. You have the word one, which shows up a couple times that you saw. Well, there's another word towards the end that shows up. Let's show that to you. And that is love. They sent me and loved them even as love. Because you loved. Love with you have loved me. So there's, there's a lot of love going on. All right. Bringing it all together. And notice the prayer that we have. Notice the, the blessings of the Lord that we have. Notice the gift of God that we have in his prayer. There is so much to be thankful for. So much to be seen, so much to be praised. And here it is finally. There it is, all in there. We have just touched on it, and it's up to you to now take a hard look and a hard study. But know it comes in the way of gift. Giving, sending, receiving, love, sanctifying, making one in his glory. In other words, having access to him, which also leads towards uh, talking about worship with him to know the truth and that it is the truth that sanctifies us all there fantastic prayer not only about him himself his apostles but also your included i pray that god's blessings would be with you at this time and that he would richly richly bless you